Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is the fourth instalment of the Expresso Nuts and Bolts tutorials. And in this one we're going to be checking out a couple of new nodes that I've recently discovered. They're both system presets and are directly related to each other. And these are the Selection Tag Reader and the Selection Tag Writer. If we just run the timeline you'll see what's going to happen here. So what we've got here is an imaginary block of flats and as we can see the lights in the block of flats are coming on in a sequence and we're using these two tags in order to make this happen. That's what we're about in this tutorial so without further ado let's see if we can make this happen. I'll set this up from scratch so I'll start with a cube its Y dimension can be left at 200. Its size X will make 100 and the Z 100. Segments 5 by 10 by 5. And that's fine. And I've got garage shading lines already set up in here. And as you can see, we've got a sort of fake block of flats. I'll also move it up in its position Y by 100 units so that it's sitting on the center of the world there nicely and we'll probably drop a floor in at some stage and probably put a light in so that we can set the scene up as we had it before but anyway the next thing to do is to make this editable and then start thinking about selections so polygon mode we need to be in in that as our selection mode um, and we just simply need to start grabbing a hold of some of the windows so I'm just going to hold down my shift key and select a few of these, well, pretty much at random, really. So there's four there, and we'll do another four here. Why not? Take that one, that one. Don't really want that one, so just take that one there. So I've got eight windows selected, and that's good. That's what I need. And then in my select menu, I can say store selection. So that gives me my first selection. And what I'm going to do is actually click off there and then copy this to here. Now my first selection here has a count value of 8 and that's fine because we've got the 8 windows in there. The second one because it's a direct copy of course it still has a value of 8 in there but we don't want anything in there so I'm going to deselect and then update and now I've got nothing and that's precisely what I need. So that's fine that's all looking good so the next stage is to get an espresso null and we'll just rename that espresso. and give it an Espresso tag and then we're ready to start work. I'll just move this over here so that we can see what we're doing more easily and just make it a little bit bigger. And then in my system presets here let's have a look and see if we can find what we're looking for. So it's weight map selection tag presets. They're the ones we're interested in and it's these two. So we've got a selection tag reader and we've got a selection tag writer. So let's just bring these two in and take a bit of a look at them. Now, they both have a tag input and that directly relates to what we've got here. Now, the, what I'm going to do, I'll drag this one in. And what I'll do first, I think, what I'll, is just to rename them so that we don't get confused. We'll call this selection tag one and this one polygon selection two. OK, great. So let's drag that one in as well. So I can connect my polygon selection tag one, just give it an object port here and then connect it to the tag. Now what this will allow us to do, we, we can take what's within this polygon selection here and we can sequence through it because we've got an index value here. Now we've got a certain number of, obviously a certain number of uh, polygons in there and it will actually be it's 250 because we know that we've got 250 because we've got 10 by 5 by 5 so we've got 250 polygons available to us so we can go through these in sequence and then we've got a count here which is basically the number of polygons if we get a, uh, a, re a result node there we can actually see if we plumb this in there you go we've got 250 polygons as I said and then We've also got a value here. Now this value is a bool. If we get the information on it, we can see that it's a bool. So it's going to be a zero or a one. Now that obviously relates to what's selected because we know that we've got 
some polygons that are selected and some polygons that are not selected. So we're going to get a certain value. If we've got a polygon that's selected, it's going to be a one. And if it's not selected, it's going to be a zero. So that means that we can sequence through these and then these values are going to be output here. And these can then be taken from here and passed to the value input of the selection tag writer. So we can we can just simply connect these two up here. And if I give this polygon selection two node here an object port that I can plug into the tag input port of the selection writer. Then basically we can sequence through this at the same time as we're sequencing through this. We're going to actually pass in sequence the contents of this selection tag reader to the selection tag writer and that will populate this with what's going on in this in sequence so you can see that's how we can switch on the lights if we give the lights a luminous texture we can switch them on in sequence and that's exactly what we're going to do so let's just take this a step further here and just get a material so if we go into our material manager here and we just click on here and open our material. We don't need color. We don't need reflectance. We just want a luminance and we can leave it exactly like that. What I'll do is give it a bit of a color. Just make it off white so that it's a bit like a sort of light from uh, a window that you might see in somebody's house or flat. And then what we can do, we can drop this onto our cube and then say that we want this selection. So selection two to be the selection that's going to actually drive which polygons the, the, the actual texture appears on. And at the moment, of course, there'll be none because we've got nothing in, in this particular selection. But with this one, we know that we've got eight windows selected. We're going to sequence through all of our windows. And as we hit the index values that are going to be delivering a one at this output, they're going to light up. That's exactly what's going to happen. So how are we going to achieve that? Well, that's the next step for us. To make it all happen, we just need a couple more nodes. Firstly, we need a time node. So we'll bring one of those in. And as per usual, I'll remove the time port and add a frame port. I'm also going to put a compare in there. So a logic compare. Because we've got a clear all here in the selection writer. Well, when our frame is at zero, so I'm going to leave the compare as equal to zero, I will want to clear this out. So I want to reset it at frame zero. OK, and that's as much as I need to do there. And then all I need to do with my frame is plug it into the index value here and the index value here. And that's our expression complete. And now if we just run the sequence, we should start to see that this will work. If we just select the second polygon selection here, we should be able to see this count value update as we get the ones for the light or the lit up windows uh, coming in. Let's just see what happens. So let's just run the sequence. There you go. And you can see the count is now six and we've got six windows lit up. We haven't got enough frames, I don't think. So let's just give ourselves a little bit more time to actually make this happen. Um, we'll make it say th like 200 frames, I should think will be fine. Let's just see what we get. There we go. And up it goes. And there you go. So you've got a count of eight now, and that's in this second uh, polygon selection. And you can see that it's doing its job perfectly well. I mean, what I did just to finish off, I suppose we can do it. We'll shove a light in there. Just bring one of those in. And I just sort of set this up as a moonlit sort of scene, really. I mean, it, it, the idea, I suppose, is that uh, there's a bit of a commotion in the street and on go the lights. That's the kind of thing I'm trying to suggest here. Let's just bring this down so that we're at sort of street level and we get a bit of a hero shot of the uh, the block of flats. Let's just get us a, a floor, drop that in. And then my light, I'll go into general here, go into color. Let's just make it a dark sort of blue. Um, we want actually get the blue back up there. Let's just get this darker so that we get something resembling moonlight. Something like that would do, I should think. Take that down a bit more. 
so that we've got a moonlit scene. So anyway, we'll play. There's a commotion in the street. Bang, bang, crash, wallop, and on go all the lights. That's what you've got to imagine here. And there you go. So it actually works fine. So if we bring back the espresso. So all we've literally done, as I say, we've, we've got our polygon selection. We set that up first. We decided which windows we wanted to light up. Plumb that into the polygon reader or the selection tag reader. Because of course this is this is a tag reader. It can of course read point tags. It can read edge tags as well. It's not restricted to polygons. So it's a powerful setup. And then you, as I say, we're literally sequencing through everything and passing the values that are stored in the first tag to the second tag via the, the tag the, the tag writer. So it's a really couple of a couple of powerful nodes these are, and I'm sure you could come up with quite a few ideas for using these within your own projects. Uh, and it can be achieved with the minimum of fuss. Um, I've just done it here with the frame output from the time node on this occasion. And that's a very simple setup. Um, obviously you can use the mono flop because that's got a counter in it. So you could use a mono flop if you wish to, to use that as a sequencer. You know, there's multiple ways that you can sort of use this. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, very simple setup as well. Just Just set the two of these up together and then find a way to sequence through them that's all you've really got to do you know it's as simple as that but uh, as i say give it a go you know see if you can come up with some interesting ideas for using it because there's plenty more scenarios that you can come up with where this will be of use to you but anyway that about completes this quick tutorial so i really hope you've enjoyed this one as always and that you found it useful and it's given you some more knowledge that you can use within your own projects and if you have enjoyed it, then please give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And of course, leave a comment and ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please share the video because all of this good stuff helps to keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that about sums this one up. So I'll see you very shortly on the next tutorial.